Going 20 and 0 in any ELO is some achievement, but doing it in Challenger is close to impossible. So how on earth does Canyon, the best jungler in the world, make these high ELO players look like complete noobs? What's up Game Weeper? It's the Jizz, and I am excited as for today's video because this is a really rare gameplay, and I will be walking you through all the things Canyon does to go 20 and 0 that you can do as well in your games. Now we can't start if you haven't subscribed, so make sure you do that, and let's get into it. So if you were playing as Canyon in this game on Slayer, and he's against a Zed jungle in this game, how many of you would start at your red buff here? Now most people would because you get a better leash from your bot lane, but that should never be the determining factor as to where you start. So in this game, Canyon decides to start at his red buff. This is all because his bot lane is probably not going to have priority, being a Yasuo and Rakan, so pathing towards bot lane probably means he won't get the scuttle crap, especially if the enemy jungler is pathing there as well. So his best chance of getting this is to path towards the volley bear, who is actually strong early game. This is just going to give Canyon more opportunities for gold and experience. Now while clearing red buff, it's essential to move towards your next camp. This is Raptor, so Canyon is going to finish red buff in this position. It's also important to consider the enemy jungler as well. This is the most important person on the map, believe it or not. So when we see the enemy Lucian and Thresh in the bot lane, we can safely assume that the enemy Zed has started at his red buff. This means that Zed is going to path towards the boss side of the map, so even in 10-20 seconds time, Canyon can ping this just to alert his mid and bot lane that Zed is on this side of the map. Now this clear Canyon does is actually the quickest level 3 in the game, so what you do is Red and Raptors and then Gromp. This is because Gromp gives you more experience than your blue buff and you will hit level 3 because of this. If you do blue, you will still be level 2. This allows Canyon to get to the top lane by 2 minutes 30 and he looks for a gank straight away. Thankfully, Poppy checks this brush for no real reason and he picks up first blood. This just happens because of this clear and Poppy is low just because she's against a strong early game volley bear. As I said, there are just going to be more opportunities for golden experience towards your strong early lanes. Now after this play, what would you do? Because lots of people here would just go into their jungle and clear their blue and wolf camp, which is good, you're getting golden experience, but they don't matter that much. Canyon is already level 3, so he's got all of his abilities, and he can actually make plays. Now after this play, Canyon could path to the Zed's Krugs, but he probably thinks that Zed has cleared his top side here, so doesn't bother checking. So instead, what he's going to do is ward this red brush and then gank mid. Now this should never really work, because if you think about it, after you gank top, the only other lane you can gank in the next 20 or so seconds is the mid lane. So the fact that Malzahar gets caught out is really, really bad. But for this actual gank, because Malphite is so far away, as you can see, Canyon's only hope of killing this Malzahar is by landing his W instantly. Holding onto it means that Malzahar would be way too far away, even if you were to land your W. So landing it right here actually puts Malzahar in kill range and allows Malphite to catch up and secure the kill. Now in this situation, because the Malphite is kind of low and he just used his cooldowns, obviously we want to shove this wave in. So Canyon is going to stay to help the Malphite do this, but all of a sudden, Bobacong on Zed just goes in. And even though he kills the Malphite, Canyon kills the Zed as well. So already at this stage in the game, he has two kills, one assist, but we still have to know how to snowball. So how do we do this? Well, Canyon looks for another kill mid because typically when that champion TPs back to lane, it is a good time to catch them off guard. But Maltahar correctly is holding the south side of this lane and there is no way Canyon can gank this. So Canyon is going to retreat to his top side and you might be like, why doesn't Canyon go to the bot crab here if Zed is already behind him? But if you think about it, even though Zed is dead, he's actually had an opportunity to buy an item. This might be a long sword. So still, in a 1v1, Canyon may well lose this. And look at bot lane for me. Thresh and Lucian have some serious priority, meaning they're going to get to that Scuttle Crab fight first, and it's just way too risky. So all he does is secure the top Scuttle Crab here, and then makes a play top lane. Now, why do you think he moves through the river like this and doesn't go through the tri brush? Well, this is because Poppy warded this tri brush when Canyon killed him for first blood. This would mean that Poppy would be alerted of Canyon's position. So what he's going to do is stay in fog as long as he can. And as soon as Volibear TPs in and then CCs the Poppy, Canyon then shows. This is something you can do in your games as well, trying to coordinate your timing and your cooldowns with your laners engage. But I've got another question. How many of you would recall in this situation as well? Because I think most junglers, if they were Canyon here, would clear their blue buff and wolf camp just because they're top side of the map. This idea of resetting your camps is for the most part a big fallacy. Canyon already has gold for his sorcerer shoes and his blue buff and wolf camp are still like 30 seconds away and he doesn't actually need the golden experience they give. So if he was to do them, really what he's doing is just wasting his own time and his team at that point would also be 4v5ing because he's inactive on the map. He's doing something he doesn't need to be doing. So notice in this game how Canyon has not even done his blue buff yet, just because the map is what dictates where we should go. If a lane is gankable, going to that lane is going to be more impactful. Perma farming certainly has its benefits, but there's always a time and place to do it. Even out of base here, you can tell that Canyon actually wanted to go to the bot lane here, but when he knows the enemy bot lane has backed off, there's no chance of a kill, so this is where he starts to farm. He farms his Krugs, then he takes his Raptors 
Raptors, and because he wants to gank mid around this angle, notice how he finishes Raptors towards that pathing. This is going to save him time and allows him to get to mid quickly and capitalize on Rakan and Yasuo's engage. And after this play, Canyon is again going to increase his lead, because in this situation, again, I think most junglers are just going to settle for the dragon hit, but if you think about it, you can see Zed on his Krugs, so if Zed's bot side is actually up here as Wolf and Gromp, Canyon can sneak in and take this before Zed actually gets down here. And the funny thing is that dragon, they can still get this, but they can do it after doing the enemy jungler's camps first. This again just maximizes your gold, just because he prioritizes Zed's camps over his. For example, when he does these wolves, notice how his own wolf camp, his own blue buff, and his own Gromp, these are still up. They're not going anywhere. So denying Zed this gold is way more impactful. It's actually double-edged. So when Zed actually checks his wolf camp here and sees that it's not up, he's wasted that time traveling towards it. Now Canyon, as we've already seen, is a master at playing the vision game and actually controlling these fog of war areas. So when he moves away from the enemy blue buff here, Resh and Zed probably think, oh, he's just going to back off. He might go gank a lane. He might recall somewhere. There's no way he's going to be in this tri brush with Rakan. This is obviously where Thresh is going to path back to lane, and it's also a great position to catch out Zed if he was to pull the Gromp closer to this tri brush. So he picks up his fourth kill as a result, even takes the Zed's Gromp, and at this point in the game, just because Canyon bases his play on what's happening on the map and also prioritizes the enemy Zed's camps over his own, he's able to accrue a massive gold lead, and even here manages to pick up the Zed who is recalling in a pretty whack position. But we still have to understand that if Zed was to actually recall in a safe position here, the reason Canyon is staying in this position is simply because the Lucian doesn't have his support. Zed was also very low after that Grom play, so really this is actually just a 3v1 if they were to dive here. You always want to punish that champion if they are under their tower on their own and you have a numbers advantage. Now there's no doubt that Canyon does get a little bit lucky here. Malphite comes in and saves the day, but it's funny, even the sketchiest of situations, if you make these optimal decisions, they still work out. Now after this play, Canyon decides to farm his red and not his Krugs. Why on earth would he not farm his Krugs here? Well, this is simply because red buff is more important and he also needs a little bit of gold for his lost chapter in Kindle Gem. Doing Krugs is fine, but if Zed was to counter jungle this side of the map, you do not want to give him red buff. So Canyon just takes this and then moves towards the top side of the map where more resources are. You can see he has three camps, Blue, Gromp and Wolves, and there's Scuttle Crab and Rift Herald is spawning very soon. Leaving all these resources up for too long, Zed may well get them before Canyon, so this is why he prioritizes this side of the map rather than just farming his Krugs and Raptors. He can do that at any time. But if you were to ask the question, why doesn't Canyon do the Scuttle Crab before these camps? It's simply because he can farm these camps so quickly now because he's got more items and damage and the Scuttle Crab isn't going anywhere. He has amazing vision around this and he would know if Zed was actually doing this because of this vision. So really he can do this at any time and instead decides to go top just because again he's playing around that strong lane he has, the Volley Bear and the setup Volley Bear brings for Talia. Like if Volley Bear lands his stun, any champion in the top lane is going to get one shot, especially when Canyon is as fed as he is. Now after this play, we don't just want to recall, we want to try and maximize our gains. This is why Canyon does Scuttle Crab and the Rift Herald and he gets both of these and after this he's going to check the enemy Zed's Raptor Camp. Now because these aren't actually here, Canyon could well recall, but just because his Malphite is towards the bot lane, he can actually deny the enemy mid lane a gold and experience here by shoving this mid wave out, which is something you guys can do in your games as well. If your mid laner is roaming and executing a play elsewhere, shove the waves so the enemy mid laner misses all the minions you have. Now his team actually wins this fight without him, who would have thought, so Canyon again doesn't just want to let these kills go to waste, so he picks up a dragon on top of this, clears his Raptor Camp, and you can see in this position he was definitely going to do his Krugs, but the reason he goes mid again is dictated by the map. Look at where Malzahar is positioned and look at where Malphite is as well. So really the question you're asking yourself is can you kill this laner? If the answer is yes, going there is just going to be the best decision. But if Malphite wasn't in this brush and if Rakan wasn't pathing mid, Canyon pathing mid would probably be a waste just because he probably can't kill the Malzahar. So the higher chance of a kill, the more viable the gank actually is. And then Canyon is going to capitalize on the enemy's mistakes again. You can see that when he paths actually down to this bot lane here, he does it in the enemy tower's vision. So Thresh and Lucian should definitely know that Canyon is passing bot and there should be so many pings here but for some reason these guys think the game is over so they don't ping this Canyon ults in and cuts these two champions off and the blue team pick up two more kills this game at this point is as good as over and Canyon ends up snowballing to go 10 and 0 which is just absolutely ridiculous but this game shows you the importance of how to read a map and reacting to it so if you can take some of these tips into your games guys no doubt you will give yourself a chance of going 20 and 0 like Canyon and if you did enjoy the video let us know by leaving a like down below and also make sure to check out the game with website we have the best challenger tier content on the web champion courses we've got guides vod analyses of the best players in the world we upload 20 videos a week for our subscribers that's right 20 videos which is crazy so check it out links in the description and comment section and until tomorrow's video this has been the cheers Bye.